So we're here because we like ketosis and we like ketones, but are exogenous ketones really going to help you get the extra edge that you need? Let's talk about it for a little bit. In this video, I wanna break down what exactly exogenous ketones are, how they work in the body when it comes down to potential weight loss, how they work in the body when it comes down to energy, how they work in the body when it comes down to brain optimization, and a couple other things. I wanna to touch on a, quite a few different angles when it comes down to exogenous ketones so you have a full variety of understanding of what's exactly happening in the body. All right, so first and foremost, for those of you that don't know what happens with ketone bodies in the body, when you are utilizing fuel, your body is either using glucose or it's using fats. And when you totally run out of glucose and you run out of muscle glycogen, your body switches gears and starts utilizing ketones as a source of fuel. That's how we know we're in ketosis. Now the thing is, there are things called exogenous ketones, which are literally those same ketones, but just in a nutritional drink or in some kind of exogenous supplement. All exogenous means is that you're getting it from an external source. You are also producing these endogenously, meaning you're producing them in your body. But if you get them exogenously, it means you're taking a supplement. So exogenous ketones are just ketones that are put in a bottle for you to drink. Now the theory is that when you consume these, they're gonna give you a little bit more energy or they might help you get into ketosis. So they might do a couple other things. Well, I wanna talk about them in detail and what they do. What we first have to know is that exogenous ketones are generally speaking beta-hydroxybutyrate. Beta-hydroxybutyrate is the main ketone body when it comes down to, well, most research to be honest. It's the most studied. And what ends up happening in the body is your body creates beta-hydroxybutyrate from ketones or from fatty acids. That beta-hydroxybutyrate then turns into something called acetoacetylacetate. Okay, this acetoacetylacetate then goes through another conversion process where it turns into acetyl coenzyme A and actually creates two of those. Now, that's a lot of science, it's a lot of craziness, you may not remember your sophomore year of biology class, but basically acetyl coenzyme A is the energy powerhouse. It's the very beginning of the Krebs cycle and it's the very end of the Krebs cycle. So it's what we ultimately want to create energy. Now, additionally, some of this beta-hydroxybutyrate does get converted into acetone and is excreted through the body. This acetoacetoacetate combines with a decarboxylation process, which actually creates acetone and excretes it through the body. So not all of the ketones that you use are used for fuel. A lot of them just get used and excreted out. But anyway, that's water under the bridge. I just wanted to give you a quick understanding of what beta-hydroxybutyrate is. Now let's talk about how it works in the body. See, when your body is not using glucose, it's utilizing these ketones. And when it utilizes these ketones, you have a lot more energy per gram than you do coming from glucose. So when we're looking at ketones, in theory, they should be very, very powerful. Well, let's take a look at how it works when it comes down to weight loss first. So a lot of people will argue that taking ketones puts you into a deeper state of ketosis and thereby helps you burn more fat. Well, in some ways that's true, in some ways it's not. What we do have to look at first is that whenever you take an exogenous ketone, you're putting something in front of the endogenous production. The endogenous production of ketones is burning your body fat, it's burning your fat stores. So when you add an exogenous source to the mix, you're putting something in front of it. So you're possibly slowing the process down. Now, on the other side of the coin, what ends up happening is exogenous ketones create what's called a feedback loop. You're exogenously putting ketones in the body. So when you do remove those ketones, your body's gonna be searching for them. Basically, it's something like this. You take exogenous ketones, your body says, yay, 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 I love running on these ketones, and then all of a sudden you take them away. Your body's like, wait, where are the ketones? Where are they? So it starts creating them a little bit faster. So it is a way to sort of, quote unquote, prime your body to producing more ketones, which thereby could, in the long term, help you lose a little bit more weight. But in the short term, taking ketones right out the gate might give you more energy, but it's not necessarily causing you to burn more fat. Now, the other thing that we really have to be careful with when it comes down to exogenous ketones is understanding glucose metabolism in conjunction with exogenous ketones. You see, studies have shown that when you consume exogenous ketones, your body preferentially wants to run on them, which means glucose metabolism slows down, which sounds like a good thing at first, but when you realize what's happening, it's a little bit sketchy and you have to just make sure that you're cautious. Basically, look at it like this. You just consumed a bunch of carbohydrates you're ready to work out, your body's about to burn all of those carbohydrates. Normally, that wouldn't cause an issue because you're not gonna store those carbohydrates, they're gonna be burned for fuel. But you decide to take exogenous ketones along with your carbohydrates. Well, since exogenous ketones are such an easier fuel to use, which is a good thing, but kind of a bad thing, the body wants to use those instead. 
So now the glucose that you already consumed from the carbohydrates isn't getting utilized. It's just sitting there. So if you consume carbohydrates in conjunction with beta-hydroxybutyrate, you could be putting yourself in a situation to store that glucose as fat, despite the fact that you'll have abundant energy coming from the ketones. So you just have to be cognizant of that. So case in point is simply that when you use exogenous ketones, you're going to get the most weight loss effect if you are already in a nutritional state of ketosis, not if you're adding them along with carbohydrates. But now it leads me into the next thing I want to talk about, which is the brain. You see, the brain normally utilizes glucose as a source of fuel. It's what it's designed to run on. However, ketone bodies are so much smaller, they're such a small molecule, they can cross through the blood-brain barrier and get utilized by the brain a lot easier. They don't have a whole lot of processing that gets involved. They just provide instant energy. So when you're consuming ketones, you do get a big boost in brain performance, a huge boost in brain performance. But you also have to be cognizant of the fact that, again, if you're consuming glucose along with these ketones, that glucose is just going to sit there. Again, you're going to feel amazing. You're going to have tremendous brain performance but you might store that glucose. And quite honestly, the studies are inconclusive because beta-hydroxybutyrate as an exogenous ketone is still so new, we're still waiting on more research to see what really happens with that glucose that's just sitting there. The other thing that's touted with exogenous ketones a lot is that they will help you with the keto flu. And in order to make a point of this, I have to explain what the keto flu is. When you are first transitioning into ketosis, a lot of times you feel run down. You feel a little nauseous, you feel a little bit sick, a little queasy, a little bit unlike yourself. Well, this happens for two reasons. It could be happening simply because your body is in that transition phase. It doesn't know how to utilize fats yet. It's still utilizing carbs. But the other thing is actually the opposite. When your body does start producing ketones, it's producing them inefficiently. It's just producing a ton of them. And you actually produce so many ketones that you kind of make yourself sick and you have to burn them off. So exogenous ketones can help with the keto flu if you're dealing with the prior situation. If you're in a situation where you're trying to encourage your body to slowly start utilizing ketones a bit more, by adding those ketones into the mix exogenously, you stimulate the body to want to use them, okay? But if you are the other kind of person that's dealing with the keto flu because you have too many ketones, you'll notice when you add exogenous ketones that you feel worse. Now, if that's the case, that doesn't mean exogenous ketones aren't for you. It just means that you have the different kind of keto flu that you shouldn't be using them with right now. And now I want to talk about the big one, which is energy and exercise performance, because this is where ketones really can shine. Okay, when we are exercising, generally speaking, we're utilizing carbs. Okay, we're utilizing glucose or we're utilizing stored glycogen that's been broken down into glucose. Now, the only exception is when you're doing very, very long duration, low intensity cardio. Okay, that's when your body utilizes beta oxidation and starts utilizing fats as a source of fuel almost 100%. But let's just forget about that one for a second. Okay, if we're looking at general exercise, the body's going to burn through carbs and then it's going to go to ketones. So if you give yourself ketones, in conjunction with carbs, your body's gonna have ketones already available. So it's gonna burn through those ketones, which actually yield more energy. So you may be storing that glycogen again, but you will find that you perform better with your exercise because those ketones are so efficient. Additionally, when it comes to endurance activities, exogenous ketones will help you immensely. Now, despite the fact that body composition could go out the window with this, okay, let's just not even think about that. Exogenous ketones will allow you to perform significantly better in endurance activities, and studies have proven that time and time again, whether or not carbs are in the equation. Now, the real place that beta-hydroxybutyrate shines is if you are already in ketosis, because you're giving yourself the fuel that you're already using. You're already using ketones. You're just giving yourself more of it. You basically, think of it like this. If you're running on carbs, we're told that you should replenish yourself with a Gatorade. You get the carbs that come in from a Gatorade and it gives you this energy in the form of carbs. Carbs aren't always good because they can get stored as fat. Ketones don't get stored as fat. So if you're a carb metabolizer and you add Gatorade into the mix, you're giving yourself carb energy. If you're a ketone metabolizer because you're in ketosis and you give yourself ketones, you're giving yourself energy. So it works out a lot better because those ketones don't get stored as fat. So the simple math here is that if you're in ketosis, ketones will give you a lot of fuel. Now, if you are looking again, just for pure, mere performance improvements, and you're not worried about body composition or getting as super lean as possible, adding ketones in addition to glucose during a workout can be very, very powerful. You will find that you have a lot of energy because your body can still use the glucose for very high intensity movements, 
but utilize the ketones for the lower intensity movements. A good example being CrossFit. CrossFit combines a lot of anaerobic, all the lifting, with aerobic, all the jump roping and the running, okay? Ordinarily, we don't have readily available fuel sources for both types of activity. Carbs are used for anaerobic, fats are used for aerobic. We don't always have them readily available, but when we use ketones, we do. You see, we have the carbs that are gonna get us through the heavy lifts, and we have the ketones that are already there to get us through the cardio. It's like the perfect CrossFit or high intensity interval training fuel. Again, if you're just looking to perform really well and aren't worried about losing body fat in that given workout. So I hope that this clears the air about exogenous ketones. I'm not saying they're bad and I'm not saying they're good. They have a practical application depending on what you are doing. They are good for body composition if you're already in ketosis. They're great for performance if you're not in ketosis. Okay, so as always, make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have any ideas for future videos, make sure you hit me in the comment section below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.